the good news is that we're balanced. It was another tough year, and we were not immune to the economic downturn that, that occurred. And so we basically had a $4 million budget gap that we needed to fill. And it was not easy. And, you know, the largest segment of that gap is oftentimes the expensive resources of personnel. So we had a number of people. They had to continue the compensation reductions. We worked with our labor unions again, and our city family came together. And they worked with us and partnered with us, and we're grateful for that. But we had some furloughs, uh, reduced benefit levels, and, and things of that nature. But we were able to balance our budget. So I continue to be grateful for all of our city family, many of them that are here uh, this morning. We also had some program cuts as well. But we were able to offset a little bit with some revenue increases. But all in all, a $4 million hit. You'll see the largest areas of revenue are our property taxes, sales taxes, and utility users taxes. These are some of our stats from this, uh, the past three fiscal years. In 0910, about 18.8 million, 1011, 19.4. This year, for our adopted budget, we're predicting a little bit of a flat, flattening of that. And one of the things we always do, and the council is, is very, very fiscally conservative, we want to make sure that we are very conservative on our re revenue estimates. And that has helped us to really uh, weather these storms very well. So we're predicting that it'll be a little bit flatter this year, but we're hoping it goes up a little bit as well. Let's look at sales tax real quick. You can see how dramatic the sales tax figures have been affected by the, uh, by the recession. We get 1% of all of the, everything you buy in the city uh, comes to the city and, and that's 1%, in that little 1%. 9, 10, about 7.8 million, 10, 11, 8.9. 11, 12, we're at forecasting just a slight increase again, very flat, but we're hoping, as I mentioned a few things later on, that that number will stabilize or maybe even go up a, a little bit uh, for next year. And then the utility users tax, uh, again, you can see it's been relatively flat, 8.0, 7.6. Uh, we're forecasting about another flattening of 8.0. This is the uh, if you look at your phone bill, you look at your gas bill, your electricity bill, it's about 4.75% of your total bill uh, the, that you pay if you live in the city. One of the biggest hits that we took this past year was the loss of redevelopment. And, you know, redevelopment has been something that has been with our community since 1962. And you look at some of the results of redevelopment, you look at the South Bay Galleria, you look at the industrial area right by the Performing Arts Center. Uh, you look at this hotel site. All of these were redevelopment project areas. And the purpose of redevelopment is to take blighted areas and to incentivize and redevelop them, invest, you know, incentivize private sector coming in to help create really good assets for a community that would, in turn, generate more jobs, more sales tax. This was taken away in, in the state budget. So we lost a total of $4 million bucks on this. And the other programs that were affected included a deferred payment low progr loan program for lower income folks for qualifying home improvements, a handy person program that was very, very popular for folks that needed repairs to their homes for some of the lower income folks in our community as well, as well as a commercial rehab program. And this one in particular, uh, you to really help the economic sustainability. Uh, it helped revitalize some of the storefronts on, on different core business corridors in, in our city, and that uh, is now gone away as well. So this is something that's, that's been a, a bit of a hit for us. Um, however, the city council opted to keep one aspect of this, and this is the affordable housing program. And one reason uh, is that it is federally funded. Uh, through Section 8. And we are fortunate to be a recipient of that. We understand the budgetary issues that are happening at the federal level. But we have a lot of folks that depend on those services. So we were able to keep that particular uh, program, and we're grateful for that. All right. Let's talk about Vitality City starting the wintertime. As was mentioned, Susan Bird and the Beach City's Health District Board um, were one of 51 competitors to become the next Vitality City, and we won. You could see some of the bike racks in, in, in um, Verrera Village, the walking school bus, some of the uh, um, cooking classes 
uh, as well. So there's been a lot, a lot of great programs. Um, let's talk a little bit about some improvements that occurred last winter as well. Alta Vista. Um, anybody play tennis out there? You may have noticed if, if you or some friends, we were able to refurbish the Alta Vista tennis courts, and they're really, really beautiful. Okay, also, uh, as we look in early in the year, and we just had one recently, Super Bowl 10K. This is a great event that the uh, Chamber of Commerce always sponsors and helps to put on. We got hit pretty hard by sardines. Approximately 175 tons or 3 million sardines came into the harbor for reasons that are still unclear right now. But uh, what killed them was the lack of oxygen. Our public works crews were immediately out there from day one. You know, these are just some of the organizations that helped us out during this event. We had public works crews from other cities. Uh, you know, Camino, the California Department of Fish and Game, Michael Hewen said this was one of the best, best executed uh, disaster responses that he's ever seen. It was the 20th anniversary last year of the Wyland Whaling Wall on the historic AES building. We were so fortunate that Wyland the artist came by, he wanted to refurbish it, and also at the same time celebrate Earth Month. And in concert with that, we held a, a big celebration. Uh, we also had a mayor's water challenge to help conserve water throughout our, our city and our region. Uh, in a regional competition, we came in number two. There's going to be a national one now as well. We were considering doing an all-mail ballot to save some money, and the city clerk had looked into this and, and recommended it. And I was one of those that were a little skeptical. I said, you know, a lot of people like to go to the polls, and will this the press turnout? Well, as it turns out, it, we got one of the highest turnouts you know, in, in the history of our municipal elections, while at the same time, we reduced about $100,000 in costs. We were able to put together a funding package to beautify one of this, these most scenic parts of our city. And combined with this, again, is art. ShareFest continues to be a great partner with us. Uh, this year, they, they renovated uh, some of the, the teen center over at Perry Park. You know, a lot of these projects are done and improvements are made behind the scenes. And I really wanted to give a shout out to these folks as well. River Village Summer Festival uh, closes off Catalina Avenue. Summertime as well is a time for fireworks. Redondo Beach Fireworks uh, sponsored by a number of people throughout the community. Um, on the, uh, the right-hand side, we were able to get about $618,000 in federal funds from the U.S. Department of Energy, and that allowed us to replace over 1,100 streetlights. North Redondo, we wanted to have a sort of North Redondo Civic Center for, for many years, and we do have that now through the Recreation and Services uh, Department that's headquartered up there that also includes a, a police substation. Uh, also, I want to highlight some of the new signage that hopefully uh, you've been able to see around town, the, the before where you see some of the, uh, the sign clutter that we have and, and the afterwards now. We are, we're very fortunate through city council supports, through the support of so many of you. There was a Facebook page that was created to save the lagoon. They got over 3,000 fans in a month. A lot of those tests that were done actually were incorrect in terms of water quality violations. And so that was a big revelation for us. And we're v I'm very pleased to report that for the near term, the lagoon is going to continue to be a precious resource and stay open as a, as a wonderful seaside park for us. Uh, and also in the fall, our traditional lobster fest through the Chamber of Commerce and through the Redonna Beach Art Group. They held uh, the annual Power of Arts celebration over two weekends at the historic AES building for that. Let's continue on the theme of performing arts. The Performing Arts Center um, is hosting and continues to host some great, great uh, performances and speakers. This is just a sampling of some of the commercials, some of the companies, and some of the TV programs that actually film here in our city. And it, it's pretty extensive. We uh, had a, uh, a wonderful, very successful senior health fair. Despite the rain, we got several hundred seniors come to the aviation gym. Riviera Holiday Stroll, we shut down Catalina Avenue. Santa roams around. We have kids and we have food. Uh, the windows are decorated in the shops, and it's just a great event. In addition to that, the Redondo Beach Roundtable helps to put on the Redondo Beach uh, Christmas tree lighting ceremony. Uh, as well as the uh, menorah lighting ceremony. And I'd like to recognize um, some folks that 
have passed away. And we, uh, this past year, we lost a number of people. Let's move, move forward real quickly into 2012, some of the things we have to look forward to. The pier and harbor and waterfront area is a big priority for myself and the council. Uh, the council and I and the community got together and we said for any development that occurs out there, we want it to keep a historical as opposed to contemporary look. But also at the same time, as part of the revitalization, Mike Zislis with Shade Hotel. It's going to be uh, starting work on the new Shade Hotel at the Venetia restaurant site. It's going to be a beautiful new boutique hotel, has about 52 rooms. If you've been out to Mulby or Moonstone Park, you'll see some of the construction that's, that's been going on. And it's going to be a beautiful new Harbor Patrol building with amenities for not only our Harbor Patrol officers, but also uh, Baywatch, the LA County lifeguards as well. Seaside Lagoon improvements. We are now going to be starting improvements to uh, the restroom building. And again, it's going to be respecting the vintage look. We're able to come up with a new Mulby master plan that has, you know, a park that will coincidentally have enough room for a helicopter to land on. Um, it will also uh, have a sailing and paddling center uh, out there as well. And, you know, the idea behind this is that we want to make this sort of a, a world-class nautical sailing water recreational facility and in, in area. And this master plan, I think, will help us here. Okay. I had quite a challenge uh, picking this year's uh, honoree. She's been a member of our community for many years. Uh, it's, I'm very proud and honored to call up to the stage uh, Caroline Leininger. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so with that, um, again, I am so honored to have presented you our State of the City this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.